what's good guys welcome back to another circuit tutorial today i'm showing you guys how you guys can make your own health slash damage slash pvp system however you want it to be so before we start i'm gonna show you guys a quick little example and in the video i make it so you can't damage yourself i actually kind of tweaked it a bit so that you can damage yourself but it's just something quickly like this as you can see my health bar has gone down my health has gone down now let's just wait let's just keep spamming this until i'm dead boom i'm dead so let's get right into the video i'm i'm not i'm not i'm gonna be quick all right this part is just for you to be it just for you to place the circuits i'm gonna explain how everything works at the end if you're confused step by step but right now just follow along with what i do get an event definition event receiver configure the event definition give it a name in this case we're going to name it health system sorry that's already a name we'll name it damage system here it's honestly the, the same thing health damage add a damage port this will be an int add a player port this can let's just name this attacker you can name this player attack or whatever you want it to be in this case name it player add ports all right come to this event receiver look for the damage system event configure it by the way if you don't know what configure is it's up here in your tool menu all right next place a event definition sorry not event definition player definition board player definition board configure it activate it it might freeze for a second edit it place a event receiver configure it to project how hit player you can also do this with explosion hit player um, melee hit player it's the same exact setup nothing changes except the fact that the events different so look for projectile hit player here so if you want to do melee hit projectile hit whatever you want to do just change it it's all the same setup get it if player is local all right if player is local this is just minimizing it to one player instead of a bunch of people sending data out to one player saying oh take damage if you do that if you have 10 players sending out data to take damage to one player then he's gonna take a billion damage like it, let, let's say I, I get hit for 10 if you have the whole lobby sending 10 damage to one player it's gonna add up to 100 like you don't want 10 people sending 10 damage like signals so that's how we minimize it to the player and that player is gonna be the player who shot you then we want to get a collision data get player collision data get player um, the reason for this is because the hit player gets turned into a collision data. I don't know why it's like that. Don't ask me. But we got to turn into a player data type. Next, we get a event receiver. Sorry, event sender. Configure it to the event we created in the event definition, which is called damage system. Change this target to player. All right, why are these two executions together? The is local execution, not not the is not local. Wire collision data into target player, wire damage into damage, and then keep this as local player. This is just sending a signal to the player that the firing player shot, saying, hey, take damage, do, do all this. Now exit out of this, click yes. All right, now place a if player is local chip. If player is local these executions together use the is not local this is just checking if you're shooting yourself if you don't if you want it so you could shoot yourself delete the is if local and just wire up the event to the if we want a bool variable this will be like the this will be like the down timer like once you once you die you'll be down for a couple of seconds so we're gonna name that down wire into the if chip this just makes it so that you can take damage switch this is local output to is not local and so that you can't take damage the reason for this is because there's a lot of bugs like when when respawning and stuff and like 
like when someone constantly shoots you while you're respawning and you get respawned back to max health sometimes you'll still even sometimes you still take damage and like you, you you like you'll be in the spawn with like half your health for some reason when you should be at full health next we want to <clears throat> we want an int variable configure it and name it health all right this is how much health you have uh, don't enable any of those settings just keep it blank uh, next we want a subtract ship this is just how much health is being subtracted from you uh, subtract boom up to you I personally like doing this uh, a Vic net I will show you guys what this is and what it looks like it all of these are just like a red border around your screen it, it's kind of like when you get bit by a zombie in Call of Duty, when you get shot, it just puts like a red border on your screen just like that. We're gonna do that. You can make that timer longer if you want, I won't. Next, we want a less than. Wire the health into A and set B to one. Get an if chip. This just checks if your health is zero or below zero. So if you get hit for a hundred, damage then you're in your at zero health and you're dead all right why listen to the if this if is just checking like i said if your health is less than one all right next we want to get a a roll roll chip place it down configure it uh, name it death uh can move set it to no Pick up restriction, set it to restrict all, set these to restrict all, set this one here to all disabled. This just makes you can't pick up anything and every and and if you try to pick up something it won't allow you to. Next place uh clone clone this bull over here, the downed bull. Set it to true. Set it to true. At, and at, come back over to this if this if right here all right i'm, I'm gonna give it a bit of time just keep just skipping the video or something come back to this if right here and why the else output into the health don't use the then output that that's that's my mistake i do that all the time all right but come back over here why the then into the bull this just says you can't take any more damage all right then we then we want to add a roll add roll player add roll we're gonna add the down roll this is the roll like I said that makes it you can't take any damage it's named death then we want a um, unequip from slots let's just drop stuff from your inventory set the ones to true that you're using if you're not using holsters don't set it to true keep it as false you want to waste extra CPU and like net heat and all that not net heat but CPU heat Next, <clears throat> place a delay chip. This is where we get into like the the death slash delay stuff. Um, and I'm also gonna make a part two of how you can reward someone for killing you, um, or just just how you can reward someone for killing someone. So delay, set this delay somewhere around three seconds. Up to you. If you want to have a whole minute delay, one second delay, it's up to you. I'm gonna do three seconds next we want to we remove remove the tag or sorry the role not 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 yeah player remove role <clears throat> after delay so after the three seconds we're gonna we're gonna remove the death rule so it'll allow you to pick stuff up now that i think about it I actually don't do this yet do this a little after we're actually going to want to respawn players first. Because sometimes players can pick up stuff before they get respawned. And, and they'll take like guns or objects they shouldn't have to their spawn or to their base. Alright, so respawn. Then we want to remove the roll. Death. I'll show you how to set up those respawn inputs in a second. Alright, boom. Boom. 
This is after I filmed this video. Quick little thing, I accidentally set this to invalid. Don't do that. Set this to local player. Sorry about that. And if you want to see this error in action, just activate it. Um, go to logging, set this tools, and you can click on the error, and it will highlight the chip that is erroring. It's a really useful tool, so let's get right back into the video. Next, we want to set this bull over here, this downed bull to false, saying you can now take damage. Now that it's false, uh, come over here and clone the health variable and set the health to 100. If your health is different, set it to something else or whatever that max player's health is. In this case, it's 100. So let me just look over this real quick. Once you die, respawn, remove your roll, make it so you can take damage and set your health to 100. Perfect. <clears throat> now, get two event receivers, configure one of them to player joined and one of them to health changed. So we're going to do the player joined one first. Player joined. Wire into if player is local. The reason we're wiring it into it if player is local is because this the player joined event it fires for everyone. We don't want everyone setting their health and and setting their health bar enabled and doing all this nonsense. We only want the player who joined to do it. There's no point if you're already in the game to set your set something to true that's already true. And also we're going to be enabling we're going to be setting your health to 100 using this. So you don't want your health to be set to 100 every time someone joins. Next, get a game HUD element or game HUD constant. Sorry. Then get a set HUD element enabled. Clone your clone another health variable. Set it to 100. This just sets it so you're at 100 health once you join. If the player has a different max health, you can just wire that up to that system right there. Set this to true so that it, it enables it. It's true. It's enabled. True means yes. Enabled. However you want to see it. False means no. Off. Disabled. Alright. So it's up to you what you want to use. I'm going to be using primary. That's the main bar that most games use. I'm going to set it to green. You don't have to worry about these other settings really. Alright, but we are done with that part. Now to show your health above your head. Player world UI. Sorry about that. Player world UI. Configure the player world UI. And disable any of these you don't need. If you don't want a secondary bar that you use for shield, disable it. If you don't want text, some people like text to display teams or, so, or like gang names, whatever. You can enable that. I'm not going to enable it. The main thing you want to enable is enable when joining and primary. Or if you want to use a secondary bar, it's up to you. Change the color. We're going to change it to green. These settings don't really matter because they're going to be changed anyway. Next, come up to your secondary bar to you to clone. Change it to health changed. Health changed. Get a set HUD element value. Pick up that juice box. Then you want to place a set HUD element value and a set player word UI value. Pri set player word UI primary bar value. Right, no, it's this one here. Boom. This is just like displaying your health on your screen and above your health up there, just like that. Uh, wire health into here, just like that. The target will be this game HUD element. Um, and I believe we are done. Give me one second to just disable this stuff over here. All right. We don't, we don't want any of that stuff right now. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> so, 
so now on to the teleporting part. I'm going to show you guys just the easiest way to, to do this, a vector component. You're going to want to move this to where your spawn point is. So let's say I want players to spawn all the way over here. Okay, that's not that far, but you get the point. <clears throat> Wire the top self yellow output into a get position. Wire this get position into the position of the respawn and wire rotation to this vector. This vector is just the direction that this arrow is pointing in. So if the arrow is pointing in this, it'll be like a bunch of long wordy num like a bunch of long numbers. Alright. And to be neat, we're gonna drag these two chips over there. We don't want to be messy. If we're messy, then that's very bad. We, we, uh, just, just don't be messy, please. Then you want to get local player. Get local player. Wire it into the target. And boom. <clears throat> you have a full on health system. Now, I'm going to go and explain what stuff does currently. Alright, so let's explain it. This checks if this is you, so you don't do damage to yourself. This checks if you can't take damage. This subtracts your health. This displays a red bar above your screen. This checks if, you're, if your health is zero or below, or one or below. This makes it so you cannot take damage anymore. This makes it so you can't move or pick up anything. This drops your weapons. This starts a delay. This is how long you, you'll just kind of be sitting there for until you respawn. This respawns you. This removes your roll. This makes it so you can't take damage again. And then set your health to 100. This enables your your HUD on your screen just like this. That enables your HUD. Set your health to 100. This just changes the values of your HUD. So if my health is 0, it'll be all the way over here. If my health is at like 50, it'll be where it's at right now currently. If it's at 100, it'll be completely full. If it's at 60, it'll be like around here somewhere. Alright, so I appreciate you guys for watching and thank you. And also one more quick thing. This player word UI. This is only going to enable when you join. So if you want to display this currently, get a display display player word UI. If you want to enable it right now. Thank you guys for watching. Um one little thing about this map I'm currently in, it's a donation map. So if you guys would like to donate anything to me, you guys can. Over here in this corner, there's a whole list of things you can donate. Um, currently, these are the top donors as of this video. So if you guys want to donate, please do. This is the name of the room right here. I appreciate you guys and see you guys in another video.